So right now we're in Monroe, Connecticut. We're about to go pay Annabelle a face-to-face -face visit. I'm gonna dare her to kill us. Just don't include me in that and we're good. You could threaten to do whatever you want. Us is what I said, I said us. You'll be fine. Hey, come on, buck up. You're, yeah. un you're undefeated. Everyone's undefeated until they aren't. Oh, that's true. Uh-oh. This week on a special episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural, we investigate Annabelle the Doll as part of our ongoing investigation into the question, are ghosts real? Oh. There it is. The head nod is back, everybody. He's <laughs> dusted it off. He had it nice I audibly uttered no this time. Yeah, <laughs> Anyways, we are going to be going to the real life home of the Warrens and we are going to be paying Annabelle a visit in real life. You know, I don't necessarily believe that this is a haunted doll. It's a demon. That's fine. It's killed people. Is that, wait, really? Like with a knife? I hope not. You know, it's in a case, right? Yeah, it's in a case for people's uh, safety and protection. Are we allowed to like tap on it? You, I'm sure you could, yeah, you could probably tap on Make it. Make little faces at it? Yeah, sure. What are you gonna do? You just... well, who knows what I'm gonna do in this place? You do what you wanna do. My I... goal, I wanna say, is for us to have a car crash on the way home. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm buck. you better buckle up, cause we're done for. Oh my God. We're going into All right, let's theme, just, baby. let's get this over with. Let's get into it. In 1952, Ed and Lorraine Warren established the New England Society for Psychic Research, or NESPER, to investigate reported hauntings. While Ed and Lorraine have since passed away, NESPER is led today by their son-in-law, Tony Spera. Over the decades, NESPER has looked into many paranormal events that would later become famous movies, including the Perrin family haunting from The Conjuring, the haunting in Connecticut, and perhaps most famously, the horrors of Amityville. None of these events, however, have captured imaginations quite like Annabelle. According to Nesper, Annabelle's story begins in 1970, when a 28-year-old nursing student named Donna received a Raggedy Ann doll from her mother as a birthday present. Nice mom. For her 28-year-old daughter. Normal, normal mom gift. Oh, you're 28? How about a diaper? <laughs> yeah, I haven't really got any Ninja Turtle action figures from my parents. Uh, since I was 10. It was a nostalgic thing, you know, you're 28 now, here's a doll, remember? <laughs> remember when you used to like it? I don't know. <laughs> she gets it, she's like, you know I pay rent, right? Cool, Mom. Yeah, I live on my own. Thanks, could've used a blender. Groceries. <laughs> Maybe some socks. Donna would keep the doll on her bed in the apartment she shared with her roommate, Angie. Shortly after receiving the doll, Donna and Angie began to notice it in positions they hadn't left it in, sometimes even finding it in a new room. On a few occasions, Donna is said to have left the doll on the couch only to later come home and find it on her bed behind the closed bedroom door. Hypothesis one, Angie is a little trickster. What about that? Because, let me tell you something, if I got a roommate who has a doll at age 28, mm -hmm. I might not like them. I might say, hey, uh, maybe we get rid of the creepy doll. Counterpoint, if you have a roommate who is 28 years old and they're into dolls, yeah. maybe you don't mess with that doll. Maybe I do, counterpoint, counter, counterpoint. No, I, I'm gonna counter, counter, counter your point. That person is probably weirdly attached to that doll. Probably not the best call to touch it. No, but the best way to then get rid of that doll that they are very attached to is to make it seem like it's haunted. But oh, we better throw this doll out, it's got ghosts in it. Their friend Lou had a bad feeling about the doll and told Donna to get rid of it. Donna didn't listen, not even after finding pieces of parchment paper which they did not keep in their home with messages such as help us and help Lou scribbled on them in a child's handwriting. <laughs> One day after noticing drops of what appeared to be blood on the doll's chest and hands, Donna and Angie decided to contact a medium. The medium conducted a seance, which revealed the spirit of a seven-year-old girl named Annabelle Higgins living in the doll. Stories differ, but some say that her body was found in the field where Donna and Angie's apartment was later constructed. The medium said Donna and Angie made Annabelle feel loved and that the spirit wanted to stay. Donna felt bad for the girl and gave permission for the spirit to live inside the doll. What if I go there and I give Annabelle permission you to live inside me? You've given spirits permission to rip your spine out. I'm gonna see if I can trap Annabelle in my soul. I don't think that's a place anybody wants to be. I feel bad for Annabelle. That's why I'm gonna trap her there. <laughs> 
machine, in a sheen prison. A sheen prison. <laughs> Lou, however, was not as accepting of the spirit's good intentions. One night, Lou awoke from a bad dream to a sensation of paralysis. He looked down at his legs and saw Annabelle, who began to crawl up his body to his chest where the doll started to strangle him. Lou eventually passed out. In the morning, he was convinced the encounter had not been a dream. I do think it's a little hard to kind of wrap my head around how plush hands could, like there's no articulation in her. It's a raggedy hand doll. It's like a little paw. So how did she? <laughs> She's just giving him a hug, really. Well, yeah, if you squeeze like really hard, like take, you take your arms like this. Where, where, how is it squeezing? Take, take your hands and then squeeze your neck. In. I'm not gonna do that. Do it. No. Do it. I'll do it. No. Just do it for the science of it. Now imagine you have little plush hands. Now take them and then just kind of squeeze. Yeah, it kind of hurts a little bit. No, I mean it's a, it's a doll full of fluff. Uh -oh. <laughs> I love you. Well, okay, I just I'm curious. <gasps> the day after Annabelle allegedly tried to strangle Lou, he and Angie were preparing for a road trip when they heard a loud wrestling noise in Donna's room. When he went to investigate, Lou found no evidence of anyone being in the room, though. Annabelle appeared to have been tossed on the floor. As he approached the doll, Lou suddenly doubled over in pain, clutching his chest through his now blood-soaked shirt. He opened his shirt to reveal claw scratches in the mark of the beast. It said Lou's chest healed almost immediately, and that all signs of the claw marks had disappeared within two days. If, if we're going with your original- oh, it was crazy, you should have seen it. I mean, it's gone now, but it was not. Well, they said that the blood came through the shirt in the moment. But I don't understand why the demon would heal it quickly too, like Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. Like, why is the demon just doubling back right away and being like, yes, I'm making you bleed. Now I'll put a little triple antibiotic on it. Neosporin's quick. Not that Fast quick. Fast acting. I, no, when that's I fell into not that how pile of bricks when I was younger, put some Neosporin on the back of my head, didn't even need stitches. You didn't get that checked out? No, it healed naturally. Okay. Again, things falling into place here. The thing is, it, it's a doll that's walking around by itself. It's possessed by something. Yeah. I think the laws of physics maybe go out the window when you're talking about the doll. That's convenient. At this point, Donna decided enough was enough and contacted a priest. Another higher ranking priest then contacted Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens determined the doll was not actually possessed, as according to Nesper, inanimate objects cannot be possessed. Instead, Annabelle was being manipulated by an inhuman demonic spirit, which was using the doll to search for a human host. According to the Warrens, the demon was only a few weeks from completing its infestation, which could have resulted in the death of Donna, Angie, and or Lou. Though they didn't believe the doll was possessed by a girl named Annabelle, the doll continues to be referred to by that original name. The Warrens asked a priest to perform an exorcist blessing on Donna and Angie's home, and Donna asked the Warrens to remove Annabelle from the apartment. Annabelle, however, would not go without a fight. While driving the doll back to their house, the Warrens claimed the car would swerve on its own and that the brakes would fail. After several near misses, Ed crossed the doll with a vial of holy water, which allowed them to finish their trip. Back at the Warrens' home, the doll resumed its haunting, moving throughout the house on its own, and even levitating out of a chair next to Ed's desk. While visiting the Warrens, Father Jason Bradford, a Catholic exorcist, reportedly picked up Annabelle from the chair it was sitting in and said, quote, you're just a rag doll, Annabelle. You can't hurt anyone, end quote, then threw it back down into the chair. Lorraine instructed Father Jason to be extra cautious while driving and to call them when he got home. Three hours later, the Warrens got a call from Father Jason, saying his brakes went out as he entered an intersection and that his car had been told. What were his exact words there? Oh God, you're not going to, are you? What were his exact words? Apparently he said, you're just a rag doll, Annabelle. You can't hurt anyone. Okay, good to know. We'll commit that to memory. I hope you don't. She's just a rag doll, right? I'm gonna call you a lift. She can't hurt own. anyone. You're gonna, you're gonna be in a separate car for me, I think. Would, would be crazy if I died. I mean, I know I say that a lot, but it would be cool to go out 
from one of the big guns. This was not the only car accident allegedly caused by the doll. One visitor to the Warren's collection reportedly banged on the case that houses Annabelle and taunted it, begging the doll to prove it was haunted by scratching him. After Ed asked the man to leave, the man got on his motorcycle with his girlfriend and rode off. According to Lorraine, the girlfriend later told the Warrens she and the man were laughing about the doll when the man suddenly lost control of the motorcycle, crashing into a tree and killing him. Yes? I like, the, I just like the description that they were laughing about the doll. What are you doing right now? You're laughing about the doll. No, but I love the idea of them being like, ha, 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 ah! <laughs> What's the most disrespectful thing I can do to her? I'm not gonna help you workshop our death. What if I creep her out and then she's afraid of me? And then she gets in a car accident. Jesus. Yeah, cause she drives home. She's gonna get back into her Prius. She's like, I don't like this place anymore. Gets in her little Malibu Barbie car. Yeah, her little doll car. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know if she does something crazy, that's probably the series finale. Sure. But boy, do I want this one to be real, just so I could see you get your ass kicked by a Raggedy Ann doll. Yeah, same, me too. And I promise it's not gonna you, happen. I will not help you, I will laugh. Great, please do. Actually, I'll probably run away. Yeah, it'll be very funny. Well, we've arrived. This is Ed and Lorraine Warren's home. You got the demon jitters. Yeah, this is maybe the most dangerous place we've ever entered. Is it? Yeah, just think of all their best cases and then something from that case that, that's all in there behind that red door. Okay. Yeah. Does this fit in the bill? You got the look in your eyes again. Yeah, I mean, this is a lot. It does look like a place that would be haunted, huh? Well, seeing that it has nothing but haunted artifacts stocked on the shelves, yeah, I'd say so. I know a little bit about some of these things, but that's the shadow doll. That's the shadow doll. So apparently you could use this doll to curse somebody and have it do your bidding for you. It'll attack you in your sleep. So I could say, that's not Ryan how you- Ryan Well, I'm not gonna tell you how to do it because if I do, you're gonna do it. I'll figure it out. I'll read the instruction manual and get back to her. That's a doll from the New England witch trials. Oh wait, really? This is like a horrifying episode of Hoarders. Well, it's very organized though. I suppose. This guy behind me was used in a satanic cult, and Ed apparently believed that it harmed Lorraine as retaliation. It's got a funny little face. It does have a funny little face. It kind of looks like you. I was gonna say it looks like you with the elongated limbs. Yeah, but it's got those little, those like scared eyes, you know, like, this is what you look like when you see a like a, a little, something you think is evidence. Oh. Well, this is really a regular shop of horrors here. A real scary By the way, we do have there? our back turned to the most dangerous doll on earth. That's fine. Okay, well, I guess there's no more getting around it. Well, we could take one step at a time if that makes you feel better. One. Okay, well, you're just gonna go then, okay. Hey, lady. Oh, okay, you, yeah, good, go for it. Well, that's her. I do like that they have this out here as a nice reminder. They actually don't know why that's there. Apparently, Ed stapled that to this box, which was specially constructed to make her con contained. Apparently, the wood is soaked in holy water. Well, that's good. If there's something in here that's manipulating this doll, and the doll being Annabelle, can you show us your presence? Can you uh, maybe manipulate this device that's in my hand? Can you make the temperature drop? Any, uh, any of the above, really. Can you move something in here? Can you move the doll or one of us? Can you jump into my body? You could think of this guy as a very big doll. I'm gonna lock you up inside my body like a little canary. Jesus Christ. You're gonna be stuck inside my rib cage forever. What do you think of that, Annabelle? It is weird to make direct eye contact. Yeah, I don't like it. A man who stared into her eyes before uh, crashed into a tree and died, so. Yeah, like you can imagine waking up in the middle of the night and seeing that little face. Oh, we got a spike when we talked about. Did you hear that? Huh? Hear what? The knock on the wood. No, that was the Osmo making a creak. There was no knock on the wood. Did a, you hear that? There was a little It was clear as a bell. It was like tunk, this. Tunk, it was like tunk. This. No, it was like this. Like, like a little. It was, it was more hollow sounding. Annabelle, I'm gonna turn on something that may help you speak to us. 
You think this is how they defeat her in the movie with the spirit box? I don't think that's how they defeat her. No, it's too annoying. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to hell now. Just to chill out for a bit and de-stress. <laughs> ah! no! We've turned on a device that will help you speak to us. Please use the energy of it to communicate with us. Can you say our names back to us to let us know you're here, that you would like to communicate? We're not here to hurt you. Oh, lovely. My name's Ryan. My name's Shane. Please say our names back to us if you would like to communicate. Can you knock on something? Can you replicate this? All right. Oh, lovely. She's really treating us to some lovely classical music. All right, Annabelle, I'm turning this spirit box off because you obviously don't like it. I don't know if you could speak, but if there's anything you'd like to say to us, maybe something you uh, want to communicate to not just us, but the world at large, now would be the time to do so. I'm going to give you some silence for you to do whatever you would like. You're just a doll. I tried to give you silence. Isn't that what the guy said to her? Oh God, why yeah. did you say that, yeah, man? Come on, come on. What's wrong with you? I'm just, you know, I'm trying to be very thorough here. Or stupid. We want a response. I'm, I'm really at a crossroads here because as much as I would like to catch some evidence here, I frankly don't want to catch anything at all. And I know that's to the detriment of all you watching out there. But uh, frankly, in this moment, I, I don't really care. No. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Oh, God, you almost gave me a heart attack. That's what kills me? Just the fright alone? Well, Annabelle, the next time you see us, it's going to be uh, just us alone. And I would like to say, while everyone's in the room here, that uh, I respect you and I don't want anything to happen. In fact, if you were to say nothing to me, that would be great. All right, Annabelle, it's you and me now, and there's no hiding. Just you and the Shanester. What I gathered from reading about her was basically just respect her. I will say, I do not respect you. People have gone in there plenty of times, and uh, nothing has happened, but the people who have chosen to mess with her didn't end that well for them. Again, I'm checking this meter all over. Oh, go up by the cross, we get a little reading. Maybe that's our pal JC. I don't know if he just hangs out in every cross in the world, or if he's split among them like a horcrux, but good to see him. That feels like some positive energy. Is he gonna show up in the Conjuring cinematic universe at some point to fight you? I have holy water though, right there. If anything happens, I guess I'll just like, um... ah, like that, back off. Come on out, fly around the room, make my bones burn. I don't know what demons do. Singe my flesh, scratch me up, make me bleed. Can you make me go blind? Oh, look, I'm seeing some action on the, uh, the flashlight over here. Was that you? If that was you, why don't you turn it off for me? Oh, now you're turning this one on. Oh my God, I just realized whatever Shane's doing right now, I'm gonna walk in, like he's like the guy whacking away at the tree with the ax. I'm gonna walk in when the tree falls down on me. Okay, so we're getting double flashlight action. That's always a joy to see. If you are going to kill me, turn the right one off. Okay, I'm pretty, pretty resolute on that. If you're gonna kill Ryan Steven Bergara in the next week, turn that left flashlight off. It's flickering. It's getting there, and he's dead. I don't even want to know what he's doing right now. Frankly, when I watch this edit later, I'm gonna be pissed off. My biggest fear from this actually is not that something is going to happen in the room. My biggest fear is that something is going to happen after the room, like say the drive home or the flight home. Okay. Time's up. All right. Which means it's my turn. It is your turn. I gotta say, and I said it to her face. She's weak sauce, bro. Have fun in here. I'm glad you set the stage so delicately for me. All right. <laughs> I'm alone in the Warren's house. 
surrounded by the world's most haunted items. My name is Ryan. If you would like to speak to me, show me a sign. You can move some... You can move something in here. You could say something. You could make the temperature drop. Manipulate the energy of the room. I'll catch it on this device here. I don't even want to get close to her. I'm sure Ryan's in there right now, pooping himself. Sort of the duality of us. That's how we work. I go in, yuck it up. Ryan goes in and uh, almost blacks out. Annabelle, there is a flashlight on your right and there's a flashlight on your left. When I count to five, turn off the flashlight on your right and turn on the flashlight on your left. This will let me know you want me to talk to you. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. That's good for... He did seem to be more alarmed than he has been in a while. Why did you pretend to be a little girl named Annabelle? God, those eyes are just so empty. It's just like a, like a void you could fill with anything you want. Ah! Oh God! Fuck! Jesus Christ! Your time's up. Did you not expect me? Well, the flashlight turned on and then you opened, then the door opened and I thought something was rustling around just, the room. Just me. Annabelle? This has been, um, I don't know if fun's the word I'd use, but- It's been fun. It has um, been fun. You're a you wonderful did. host. Thank you for having yeah, us. I appreciate the hospitality. Sweet gal. I appreciate you not doing anything to me now or in the future. And uh, I bid you adieu. And just a reminder, Los Angeles doesn't have the best public transport in the world, so we are in vehicles quite a bit, every day, always traveling. Uh, just, just a heads up. Between me and you, he's free reign. So, will that, will that incriminate me in court if something happens to me? That's eh, probably fine. All right, well, take it easy. When a mother purchased an innocent looking Raggedy Ann doll in 1970, she was simply hoping to give her daughter a cute birthday present. There was no way she could have known the horrifying stories and cinematic blockbusters that would result from the gift. Whether Annabelle is done tormenting the people she comes in contact with, or if she still has more nightmares to inflict on those who cross her path, remains unsolved. Well, we did it. We did it. We're here. And now, uh, well, actually, we didn't do it because now this is the part where people have often got hurt. <laughs> and seeing as you did all the things that you shouldn't have. <laughs> Why? Are you, are you so angry you can't even speak? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you did what you did in there. And now we're in the same car. You realize the amount of danger that you put everybody in? Think of this though. Think of what a gift it will be. If you survive the next couple weeks, no, no accidents, no nothing, you can put her on your little checklist of ghouls. No, I think I'm just gonna always, I'm just gonna forget this happened. I'll remind you as often as possible. I'm gonna be so pissed off if we die. Let's get home, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we'll try our best. Oh, God!